Hi everyone, I am Asif and my topic of discussion for assignment 4 is polarization, reflection and transmission. So without further ado, let's start. Now before going deep into the topic, let us first review our basic understanding of electromagnetic waves. By this time, we all are supposed to know that electromagnetic waves are energy transported through free space or a medium in the form of electric and magnetic fields. An electromagnetic wave consists of two fluctuating fields. One, an electric field which varies in the direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Two, a magnetic field oriented at right angles to the electric field. These two oscillating energy fields are mutually perpendicular, which is seen in the figure. Now it is very important to remember that for our convenience, in most illustrations, the magnetic field component is purposely omitted. Instead, we represent only the electric field vector to represent an electromagnetic wave. So when we say that an electromagnetic wave is traveling, we represent that electromagnetic wave in terms of electric field. Now speaking of the direction of electric and magnetic fields associated with an EM wave, it is also important to understand transverse electric or TE, transverse magnetic or TM, and transverse electromagnetic or TEM waves. From the previous slide we came to know that electric field and magnetic fields are oriented mutually perpendicular. Well, to be honest, this is not true for most cases. Each of these TE, TM, and TEM waves are particular configurations of electromagnetic wave. Now, do you remember the figure from the previous slide? It was a TEM wave. TEM wave has only one component of electric and one component of magnetic field, while TE and TM don't. TE wave or a transverse electric wave has one component of electric field and two components of magnetic fields. The components for TM wave or transverse magnetic wave is vice versa. So for a transverse magnetic wave, there is one component of magnetic field and two components of electric field. Now, what do we actually mean when we say that TE has two components of magnetic field? Well, it means that the magnetic field vector for TE is not parallel to a particular coordinate. As you can see in the figure, the magnetic field is tilted for TE. Here it is, meaning that it has two components. Now before it gets too late, let me start talking on my main topic, polarization. In the class, we have seen many demonstrations of polarization. We know that our sunglasses are made out of polarizers. The 3D glasses are also made out of different kind of polarizers. You see, light is actually an electromagnetic wave. The visual light is a very small part of the wide electromagnetic wave spectrum. So for convenience, I will not talk about the effect of polarization in light. Instead, I'll keep things more general and talk about polarization in electromagnetic waves. We know that an EM wave consists of electric and magnetic fields. But when we say polarization, we only refer to the orientation of electric field of that wave. When we say a wave is propagating in the y direction, we don't actually get any information of the direction of the electric or the magnetic field. 
because you see that for a wave traveling in the y direction the electric field or the magnetic field can be directed in any random directions so when we are told that the wave is propagating in the y direction and is z polarized then we understand that the electric field is oriented in the z direction if it is a tem wave then we get the direction of magnetic field because we know that for tem wave the magnetic field is directed transverse to the direction of propagation and the direction of magnetic field polarization can be of three types linear polarization circular polarization and elliptical polarization out of these three linear polarization is the simplest one what is linear polarization if the electric field remain in its perspective plane the radiation is called to be linearly polarized for linear polarization the electric field did not actually rotate it stayed into a same plane however for circularly polarized light the direction of E field rotates while maintaining a single amplitude that is why on a plane you would see a circularly rotating electric field it is evident from the figure right circular polarization occurs when two or more linearly polarized wave with equal amplitude add up together such a way that the E field of the net wave rotates next comes the discussion of elliptical polarization well elliptical polarization is actually same as circular polarization except instead of rotating circularly the E field rotates elliptically the direction of electric field rotates but its magnitude changes it's also it is also evident from the figure elliptical polarization occurs when two or more linearly polarized wave with different amplitude add together such a way that the electric field of the net wave rotates elliptically now I will talk on the second part of the topic reflection and transmission of electromagnetic waves when electromagnetic wave travels from one medium to another medium this analysis comes handy now to start the discussion let me recall the first question of our take-home midterm it was about an incident electromagnetic wave which had an electric field express as the following equation now I told you before that a traveling electromagnetic wave is expressed in terms of electric field if we analyze this equation of electric field we see two parts this part represents the direction of electric field or polarization of the wave now this direction of electric field is not same as the direction of propagation this part represents the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave but how do we get this form of a propagating wave well it can be shown that a uniform plane wave takes the general form of this equation the cosine is actually a real part of the exponential term here r is the position vector and k is the propagation vector k actually determines the direction of propagation of the plane wave when you dot product k and r you get this kind of equation now I will discuss on polarization by reflection from a dielectric media why do I say so because the polarization or the direction of electric field in an incident plane wave changes when it gets reflected 
Here I should mention that I'm following this analysis from the book of Sadiku. So, when an EM wave finds a surface separating two mediums, two new waves gets created. There is a transmitted wave that goes into the second medium and there's another wave that gets reflected back into the first medium. So we have got three waves here and all of them are expressed in terms of electric field. As you can see the direction of electric field is embedded here inside the magnitude and the direction of the wave is given here in terms of the propagation constants kx, ky, and kz. They're kept in general, so they're just assumed to be propagating in a random direction having x, y, and z components. Here we can apply phase matching condition at the boundary of the two mediums. The phase matching condition can be seen more clearly in this equation. We have two waves in medium 1, the incident and the reflected. And in, in medium 2, we have only one wave, the transmitted wave. So the addition of incident wave and reflected wave for z equals 0 should be equal to the transmitted wave for z equals 0. Well, this equation actually means that all these three waves at z equals zero or at the boundary meets at a single point. Now, if you plug in z equals zero into the three equations of these fields, you would get these conditions. The first conditions say that the frequencies of the three waves are same well, this is kind of obvious, right? We're actually proving this mathematically. Okay, the second condition say that the x components of the propagation constant is same for the three waves. And the third component say that the y components of the propagation constants are the same. Now, from the second and third condition, we end up getting this condition. These two lines will help us to relate the incident angle with the reflected angle and transmitted angle. This first line gives us a relation between incident angle and the reflected angle. And the second line gives us a relation between the incident angle and transmitted angle. We see that the incident angle and reflected angle are equal because this propagation constant Ki is equal to the propagation constant Kr because they are both in the same media. However, Ki is not equal to Kt because Kt is in medium 2. That is why the relation between theta i and theta t is kind of different. This is the relation, which leads us to Snell's law. Our previous analysis was a general analysis. Our electric field was randomly directed. Our wave that was propagating had Kx, Ky, and Kz component, so it was randomly directed as well. Now let us consider a different case where the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence which is called parallel polarization. We can express our incident electric field for this parallel polarization case in terms of this equation. It is not a general case anymore. It can be written from this figure we see on the left side. Now, how can we get to this equation? Uh, our general equation of electric field, incident electric field, did have x, y, and z component. However, in this situation, we don't have the three components. It is evident from the figure that it has only x and z component. It doesn't have a y component. So we don't use this y component. And the direction of electric field 
is found from the figure as well. It does not have a Y component as well. As you can see in the figure that Y that is given by this vector has Z and X component. So when you have to do this kind of calculations, you have to consider two directions. One, your direction of propagation and your direction of electric field. This was our incident electric field. Now what would be the incident magnetic field? Well, to get this information, you need to have three parameters. One, the amplitude of the field. Two, the direction of the field. And three, the direction of the wave itself. What is the amplitude of the incident magnetic field? Well, it is equal to the amplitude of the electric field over the impedance of this first medium. Now, what is the direction of the H field? This wave, incident wave, is assumed to be TEM wave. So the direction of H is transverse to the direction of wave and the direction of the E field. So it is directed into the Y direction, which is out of the page. And this exponential term would be same for incident electric and magnetic field because this E and H field is a part of this incident wave, right? So the wave is same for E and H field. So they would be same parameters in the exponential term. Now following the same procedure, we can get the reflected electric and magnetic field and the transmitted electric and magnetic field which are expressed in terms of these equations. Now if we apply the phase matching condition in this situation we would be able to find some interesting relation between the amplitudes of the waves. According to the phase matching condition if you put z equals zero into the relationship between the electric and magnetic fields you would get these two equations. The first equation represents the relationship between incident, reflected, and transmitted wave at the boundary. And this second line represents the relationship between the magnetic fields. You see that these electric field amplitudes are divided by this impedance. This means that this is the relationship between the magnetic fields. Now from these two conditions, we are able to define the transmission coefficient and the reflection coefficient of the transmitted and reflected wave. Now these two equations are very important in electromagnetics because this transmission coefficient tells us the percentage of incident wave that is going to be transmitted into the second medium and this reflection coefficient tells us the percentage of incident wave that is going to be reflected back into the first medium. As you can see from these two relationships that the amplitude of the reflected wave and the transmitted wave actually depends on the incident angle and the transmitted angle and the two wave impedances of these two medium. That is very interesting. Uh, with that being said, I'll conclude my discussions here. As a summary, we can say that we looked into different kind of polarization into the first part of this discussion. And in the second part, we looked at reflection and transmission of an obliquely incident wave in this few minutes. Thank you, everybody. Have a good final oral exam.